Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 3, Lesson 8, Translations in the Coordinate Plane. So in the last lesson we talked about translations and we talked about this idea of a vector. You know, and all that a vector is is basically a way of describing what direction and how far we should shift all the points in the plane. So it doesn't really particularly matter where the vector is. Really a vector is just about distance and direction and that's it and one of the great things about the coordinate plane is it actually makes translations exceptionally easy to both describe and carry out so let's get right into it in the first exercise and take a look at a translation otherwise known as a shift in the coordinate plane here we go exercise number one the grid below contains points a negative 4 negative 2 b negative 1 comma 3 and c 2 comma negative 1 Letter A asks us to translate point C to its image, C prime, by moving it along the vector that maps A to B. Give its coordinates below. All right, so I know that we've never done a translation in the coordinate plane, but what I'd like you to do is actually take an attempt at it. And again, the idea is, right, this vector that goes from A to B, right, describes a direction and it describes a length. I want you to take point C and I want you to shift it exactly the same distance exactly in the same direction, all right? So in other words, parallel to this, to this vector, all right? Pause the video now and see if you can figure out where point C gets mapped to. All right, I have a huge advantage over you in this situation. One, I know the math, but two, I can just take this blue vector and I can kind of shift it right over here to point C, right? And that really does kind of give me a huge tool because it shows me exactly where I should be putting point C prime, right? So C prime is going to be right here and that's at a coordinate point 5 comma 4, right? And that's exactly what a, the idea of a vector. Oh, if I took this point and I slid it like this, and I took this point and I slid it exactly the same distance, exactly parallel to this, where would it end up? And it would end up right over here at the point 5 comma 4. Now let's get into sort of brass tacks as they say. Letter B, how can we describe the effect of this translation on where the image is located compared to the original point? All right, so where exactly, whether it's B compared to A or C prime compared to C, how would you describe where those image points are compared to the original? Think about this a little bit. Well, in both cases, right, we are three units to the right. I'll put a big capital R for right and five units up, right? Three units to the right and five units up. And that's how we can affect it. Points are shifted. Here we go, there's my F. They're shifted, what did we say? Three units right. and five units up. Very, very often, that is the way translations are described in the coordinate plane. In other words, we basically just say, hey, to do this translation, take every point and move it two units to the right and five units down, or three units to the left and two units up. We simply describe how much the points should move left, right, and how much they should move up, down. And that makes it exceptionally easy to talk about translations in the coordinate plane and to even give rules for them. So let's keep playing with this idea of translations in the coordinate plane. So in the coordinate plane, translations are often given in terms of movements right, left, and movement up, down. So exercise number two. Triangle ABC is graphed on the grid to the right. Its vertices have coordinates of A, negative 6, 2, B, negative 1, 7, and C, 3, 2. Letter A asks us to translate ABC, 
six units to the right, and five units down, label its image A prime, B prime, C prime, state the coordinates of the image vertices below. All right, so this is easy enough, right? It says, take the triangle and move it six units to the right and five units down. All right, so this is very easy. In fact, let's, let's do it with point A together, and then we'll have you work on point B and point C on your own. So point A, what are we going to do? Let's see, we're sitting right here. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we're going to go five units down, one, two, three, four, five, and there's my A prime. So in terms of my mapping, I can say A, which is at negative six comma two, goes to A prime, which is at zero, negative three. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to do the same, including this kind of mapping down here, I'd like you to do the same up here for point B and point C and then connect them with line segments so you've got the full triangle and you can see it, how it compares to the original. Pause the video now and take a few minutes to do this. All right, let's go through it. So for letter B, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. There's my B prime. We'll get down the coordinates in a second. For C, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. C prime. I'm going to just connect these kind of freehand. Of course, on any kind of an assessment, you would certainly want to do them with a, uh, with a ruler or a straight edge or something like that. There you go. Let's also show the mapping. We've got B here at negative 1 comma 7, went to B prime, whose coordinates were 5 comma 2. Let me move this out of the way. And then let's do C, which is 3 comma 2, gets mapped to C prime, which is at 9 comma negative 3. All right, so simple enough. And literally, all we did was take this triangle and shift it six units to the right, five units down. I think that was it, right? Six units to the right, five units down, and there's our other triangle. Keep in mind, right, translations are an example of what's known as a rigid motion, right? So this triangle and this triangle are congruent to each other. If I took a piece of tracing paper, put it over this triangle, traced it out, and then just kind of moved it over here, it would fall exactly on top of that triangle. They are the same triangle, just in different locations. Now for something very important, letter B. How could you have found the coordinates of the image vertices using addition and subtraction? So in other words, you know, I did this very inefficiently. I literally stood here with A and I went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I put A there. B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? We want to be able to do this simply kind of using addition and subtraction. So the question is, how could I go from these coordinates to these coordinates just using addition and subtraction? Think about what our translation is, all right, and see if you can figure that out. Pause the video right now. All right. Well, it's basically this simple, and it hopefully will make a lot of sense, right? We needed to shift the thing six units to the right. So if you took this negative six and you added six to it, you would get zero. If you took this negative one and added six to it, you'd get positive five. And here's the most obvious one. If you took three and added six to it, you'd get nine, right? So it looks, in order to shift it six units to the right, I just add six to the x-coordinate. That should make a lot of sense, right? I mean, that just means my x-coordinates here are six units more than my x-coordinates here. Now, we're also shifting five units down. If I take two and I subtract five, I'm at negative three. If I take seven and subtract five, I'm at two. And again, if I take two and subtract five, I'm at negative three. So moving down by five units just meant we had to subtract five from y. All right, and it's really that easy with translations. So we add 6 to x, moving right, all right, 
right? And let me extend this a little bit. We subtract 5 from y. And that's because we're moving down. So to no great surprise, right? To no great surprise, if you're going to move to the right, you're going to add. And if you move to the left, you're going to subtract. If you move up, you're going to add to the y. And if you move down, you're going to subtract from the y. And again, that should make complete sense in terms of the coordinate grid and what it means to add and subtract. So let's keep working with this idea in the next exercise. Here we go. Translations are often given in algebraic rules that should make a lot of sense. Exercise number three. Trapezoid LMNP is shown graphed below. It has vertices at L, 3 comma 4, M, 5 comma 4, N, 9 comma negative 2, and P, 2 comma negative 2. Map the trapezoid to its image, L prime, M prime, N prime, P prime, using the rule X comma Y gets mapped to X minus 4 comma Y plus 5, show where each vertex point is mapped below. All right, so even if we didn't know or suspect that this was going to be a translation, we should still be able to do the mapping using this rule. And this rule simply takes, says, take the original x coordinate and subtract 4, take the original y coordinate and add 5. So let's do that plot and see what we have, right? And let's do a couple of them together, then have you do a few of them on your own. So L, which is at 3 comma 4, right, is going to get mapped to L prime. And what will we have? Well, we'll have 3 minus 4, and then we'll have 4 plus 5. In other words, ah, 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 that will be L prime is at negative 1, comma 9. Negative 1, comma 9. Right there. Right? Let's do another one. M, which is at 5, comma 4, will get mapped using this rule to M prime. We'll take that x and subtract 4. We'll take that y and add 5. And so that will give us an m prime at 1, 9. All right, they're pretty close together, but that's OK. What I'd like you to do now right, is I'd like you to take point n and point p and do exactly what we did here, plot those out, connect them all with straight line segments, and take a look at the trapezoid that we have. Pause the video now and take a few minutes to do that. All right, let's go through it. Here we go. I'm going to bring this up just a bit so that we've got a little bit more. Um, we've got n at 9, negative 2. We'll go to n prime. Again, we're going to subtract 4. And we're going to add 5 to that. That negative didn't quite show up there. Let's try that again. So we're going to have n prime. Let me try to squeeze this in. 9 minus 4 is 5. Negative 2 plus 5, be careful there with your sign numbers, is positive 3. So we'll have 5 comma 3. There's our n prime. And finally, we've got p, which is at 2 comma negative 2. We'll get mapped to p prime. Right, that'll be 2 minus 4 and negative 2 plus 5. That will give us a p prime at negative 2 comma 3. All right, so hopefully you had no problem coming up with those. Just a little addition and subtraction. Granted, there were some assigned numbers in there. And there's our new <laughs> hand sketch trapezoid. Now again, right you can see that these two images are clearly congruent. They're identical images. But letter B asks us, what was the effect of this transformation? That should be pretty easy. Why don't you go ahead and pause the, the video and describe what the effect of this transformation rule was. All right, well, should be pretty easy, right? We took this thing and we shifted it four units to the left and we shifted it five units up. And that's exactly what we would expect if we subtract four from all the x coordinates and we add five to all the y's. It's just gonna shift it to the left four and shift it up five. So it translated the 
trapezoid. Four units left. And five units up. All right. Now, a little, little side note. Anytime you take a figure in the plane and you map it to another figure, that's called a transformation, a transformation. Then you've got translations. Those two words sound a lot alike, so just be careful, right? You know, it'd be easy to like, you know, read one word and think it's the other word. Translations are this, these left, right, up, down slides, right? A transformation is anything we've studied so far. Rotations, reflections, translations, eventually dilations, or any other kind of change of the points in the plane. Let's keep going. All right, exercise number five. Let's take a look. We can combine rigid motions to produce more rigid motions, right? And that makes sense. If I take a rigid motion, like a translation, and I do something with it, and then I take that image and I do another rigid motion on it, right? Then what's gonna happen is the combination of those two are gonna still be a rigid motion given that I'm not changing the way the object looks, I'm just repositioning it in the plane. So let's take a look at an exercise that gets at that idea. Exercise number four. Right triangle CDE is shown below with vertices at C, 2 comma 1, D, 8 comma 1, and E, 8 comma 4. Letter A, draw the image of triangle CDE after a translation of 8 units to the right and 3 units up. Label its image triangle C prime, D prime, E prime. Give the coordinates of its vertices below. All right. Well, why don't you pause the video now that we've talked about translations in the plane and go ahead and do this translation to that triangle. Also state its new coordinates down here and then we'll move on to, point, to part B. All right. Well, for me at least, I prefer to actually do the sort of, I don't want to call it algebra, but the arithmetic, given that I know it's going to be 8 to the right and 3 units up, and then I get my image points and I plot them. I, I trust myself more to add and subtract than I do to count. In other words, I could take point C and I could be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 1, 2, 3. But what I'd prefer to do for myself is I'd prefer to simply take the point C, 2 comma 1, and since I'm going 8 units to the right, I'm just going to add 8 to the x. And since I'm going 3 units up, I'm going to simply add 3 to the y. So I'm going to get C prime at 10 comma 4, right? Likewise, for D, which is at 8 comma 1, right, I can add 8 to the x, that's going to be 16. I can add 3 to the y, that's going to be 4. So D prime is going to be at 16 comma 4. And finally, E, which is at 8 comma 4, I can add 8 to the x to give me 16. I can add 3 to the y to give me 7. And I will be right here. So that accomplishes two things at once. It allows me to plot the triangle. And it also states the new images, the, the new vertex images down here. And again, notice this triangle and this triangle are congruent. They are the same triangle. They're just repositioned differently. Now let's take a look at letter B. Draw the image of triangle C prime, D prime, E prime after a reflection across the line y equals 10. Label its image triangle C double prime, D double prime, E double prime, and state the coordinates of the vertices below. Now, unlike this one up here where I stated the, the vertice coordinates first and then plotted, here I'm going to go in the opposite. So I'm going to get the plot and then I'm going to state the coordinates. Right? Now, I'm going to do a reflection, and I know the easiest reflections are across the x and the y axis, but here I want to reflect across the line y equals 10. So this goes back to an earlier lesson that we had when we were reflecting in lines other than the x and the y coordinate. And y equals 10, if you recall, is a horizontal line. It is a horizontal line. And in fact, let's graph it, right? So y equals 10. is the horizontal line comprised of all the coordinates where y is 10, right? It's not just a single point. It's all the coordinates where y is 10. 
So what I now want to do is I want to take this triangle and I want to flip it across that line. And the key is, of course, that every point should be equidistant away from that line that it was underneath it. So, for instance, you know, C prime right here, right? If I were to go to sit from C prime, which is at a y coordinate of 4, up to a y coordinate of 10, that would be 6 units. I would then have to go another 6 units above it in order to get its image point. So, given that it's 6 units below here, I need to go 6 units above here, and that is going to be C double prime. Right? What I'd like you to do is pause the video and figure out where D double prime and E double prime are going to go and finish drawing the triangle. All right. Well, let me do uh, D prime as well. D prime is pretty easy because it was the same distance that C double prime, that C prime was away. In other words, that's six units. The E prime, that's three units below. So I'm going to go three units above, and it's going to be right there. And that's going to be our new image triangle. Again, identical to the other two that are drawn there because they're all rigid motions, these reflections and translations. Let's get down their coordinates. We were asked to do that. I'm not going to do the mapping diagram. I don't actually have to do that. But they do ask me to state the coordinates. So C double prime is going to be at 10 comma 16. D double prime is going to be at 16 comma 16. No, I like that. And E double prime is going to be at 16 comma 13. Yeah, just wanted to double check that. Okay, and that's it. Right, the big picture actually in this problem, and this is very, very important in terms of your geometric thinking, is that you've got these rigid body transformations, these transformations that do not change the shape nor the size of the original image. So when I take this thing, this triangle, and I translate it, I get a triangle that looks exactly like it. It's just in a different location. Then when I take this triangle and I flip it or I reflect it across this horizontal line, y equals 10, I get yet a third triangle, which is identical to this one, which is identical to this one, right? And again, we do this kind of image manipulation all the time in the real world, especially on your phones, right? You go out and you take, an, you take a picture of somebody. Right, and then maybe you flip the picture, or you rotate the picture, or something like that. And it's not changing you know, the shape nor the size of the images in the picture, not unless, of course, you change the size of the picture by kind of cropping it, right, making it, stretching it to make it larger or smaller. But all of those things, right, retain the shape and the size of the original picture. Okay? So let's wrap this thing up. Today, what we looked at were translations in the coordinate plane, which are exceptionally easy to give because you can just say, instead of talking about vectors and mapping from this point to this point, you can simply say, okay, translate this object by shifting it three units to the right and seven units up, or two units to the left and five units up, something like that. Additionally, they're very easy to do with arithmetic because shifting right or up implies that we should add to the x or the y coordinate, respectively, and shifting to the left or down implies that we should subtract from the x or the y coordinate, respectively. So they're very, very easy translations to give in terms of rules. Ah, just add, subtract, whatever you have. All right? We're going to do some more translations in our next lesson and in further lessons. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.